Hasn't got this copy, How to Live in Happiness. Maybe you should. You don't. Back there, few. <coughs> Everyone got? Uh, okay. Okay, hear it. Okay, fast. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Please take a deep breath. Inhale. <coughs> Exhale. Please inhale fully and uh, expand your chest. Exhale. And then please do third time. Please inhale fully. Now, <coughs> see, past is past, it's not here. We drop different places out here. It's all experiences, are just nothing but memory. It's like an illusion, like a dream. Future is not come yet here. This moment is so momentary. It doesn't stay in one second. So this is the reality nature. How everything is changing. Nothing lasts long. 
say that. So let go of the all the past. Whether good or bad. That means something happened good, let it go because it's past. There's nothing to attach to that. If something's happened bad, that's also past. Let go. There's no any benefit having aversion, resentment. And future is always uncertain. We plan, I will do this, 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 that. But we, we are not sure if it will happen or not. So this is the only moment we have. And this moment is so momentary. So we should know how to live our life moment to moment. Relax. Gather all the causes of the peace and happiness. And release all the causes of the suffering. That's calm. Mindfulness. This calm. So today you, we all met this time, we met this program, just nothing but to reflect in the Buddha's teaching, the teaching that is the nature of the wisdom and compassion. Wisdom means knowing the causality and its nature. Compassion is the application, the practice we follow. So we need this tool, the insightful understanding, hence as mentioned, all the causes and condition, the cause of suffering, the cause of happiness, cause of the relativity state and cause for the enlightenment. This insightful nature, understanding, penetrating is called wisdom. And compassion is the mind which allows to maintain that state, making the space strength, courage. So we appreciate that. This lucky and this lucky and making a good lunch. When you make a good lunch, you need to know all the ingredients that you want to have. Once you have all the ingredients that you want to have, then you need, you need a skill how to make it. All the method, all the process, step by step. So the wisdom and the method equally important. So with this two wisdom, the wisdom and the method, a good lunch, you get a good lunch. Same thing in our inner mental. We need the wisdom and the method. It's universal. So we appreciate this. We rejoice this. We should feel I'm very fortunate having this opportunity. Grateful, I have the precious human life, and especially the interest in the study, practice of these precious teachings. 
any moment you can spend on this kind of exercise. You get so much benefit. As yesterday I mentioned the story of the mother when she received the metal, the wisdom from Buddha. How she was very grateful. All Heaviness, just darkness, it's all alleviated through the wisdom and compassion. So this is the, the study that is we need in the samsara all the time. This mind will say, first, this is refuge ceremony. We'll, we'll say this refuge page, for page five, look at the prayer, prayer booklet, page five. Of course, I will explain this step by step. Here we take refuge means this is the understanding. We are not taking refuge in the statue. See, we are not taking refuge in the painting, tankas. But we are taking refuge in the wisdom and compassion, the Buddha. You know, that's very important. We took refuge in the samsara, in the wrong place. We took refuge in the confusion, mental affliction. Because of taking refuge in that way, we have never been free from samsara. You know? See, we take refuge in our anger, aversion. We take refuge in our attachment, delusion, our confusion you know? so in the samsara. Everybody, not only me and you, but everybody in the samsara, we, we took refuge in them. Because of that, we have never. Perfect. Arma. That's what we practice. Practice to purify our mental afflictions, like say ten nine virtues. We practice the ten virtues because they are the cause of the peace and happiness. You know, ten nine virtues are the cause for the suffering. As yesterday I mentioned, it's not just a Buddhist belief. This universal reality nature. Everywhere we need this. You know, we need to understand this and we need to practice this. So, 
So that's what's called taking refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha, who are successful in these practices. It's not just wearing the robes, but who are practicing that. Because I take refuge in the Sangha. The great Buddhist Abbas, those in the Buddha, the Dharma, Sangha, excellent. Take refuge at the merit of Abbas and other good deeds. I attain the Circle of all should be. In the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, most excellent, I take refuge and do not By the merit of the Western and other good things, I attain the whole circle of all In the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, most excellent, I take refuge By the merit of the other good deeds, I attain the Next, please. May all mother sentient beings balance the sky, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering and the causes of suffering. May never be separated from happiness that's free from sorrow. May the rest and equanimity become attached to me. May all mother sentient beings balance the sky, have happiness and the causes of happiness. And they be liberated from suffering, causes of suffering. And they never be separated from happiness, it's free from sorrow. And the rest and economy become attached in evolution. May all mother sentient beings bounce the sky, have happiness and causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering, the causes of suffering. And they be never so separated from happiness, it's free from and the rest and economy free from attachment and aversion. <clears throat> now we go through this text as you had the copy. Uh, please open page five. This is the special one of practice mentioned. Said all the peace and happiness of Samsara and all the excellent cultures, the Sharavakas, Bhattaka Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and Buddhas are achieved through this practice of Bodhicitta. I'm sure most of you know what Bodhicitta is about. Bodhi, body, body means enlightenment. Chitta is the mind. Mind says is a ground bodhicitta, path bodhicitta, the fruition bodhicitta. So the, the mind of enlightenment is what is basically. So a ground bodhicitta is the Buddha nature. That's it. Everyone endows bodhicitta. The nature. And the Bible also says the kingdom of the God is within you. The kingdom of the God is the Buddha nature. The God is where is the kingdom is. So Bodhicitta is where all sentient beings have the Buddha nature. As yesterday mentioned, because of the nature that we have from our co-emergent mind, from innate of the mind, 
desire of peace and happiness. The cause of the Buddha, the Buddha nature. Suffering. Suffering is never appreciated. Physically, mentally, it is wrong. So that's the ground for the chitta. Since we have it, we are always looking for the solution of the suffering. Sometimes we make mistake. We go to the wrong place. We are doing wrong things. Still desire for peace and happiness. Still we are working for or to free from suffering. Well, we are making mistakes. Well, we are confused, deluded, within that darkness of the delusion, still we are looking for peace, happiness. Still we are looking for how to free from suffering. That's the reality, you see. Uh, it shows the causality, interdependent nature, the causes and conditions. sense. So, automatically, we dislike the suffering. So now we are looking what's the cause of suffering. So there's a surface, there's an beneath, underneath, more underneath, deeper and deeper. There are many layers. So that's the profundity nature of the mind, as yesterday mentioned. So we can go through this step by step. So we need to we need to take it makes sense. Take we need to take refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha. You see, by taking refuge, it's not just converting us. What is you know, it's not the idea converting. This is not. The idea is how to free from suffering. See, that's the idea. How to achieve peace and happiness. That's the, our primary cause. Not making many Buddhists. If all Buddhists are corrupted, what's benefit? <laughs> Doesn't make sense, you know. <laughs> so, See, the idea is how to free from suffering, to achieve peace and happiness. That's the idea. So from that, we study, investigate, practice. As mentioned, these three things are very important. Tibetan call, Pe Sam Om. Pe means you hear, you study, read the books, lesson from the teachers, make sure what is talking about, what show, what you're reading about. Then, once you heard of that, then you investigate, it makes sense or not. To empirically understand, contemplate. Once it makes sense, then put into practice. So it's got three. Pe, sum, om, sum. Is how it is important. So that's called path, the bodhicitta of the path. Through that step, you follow step by step. See, once we perfected that practice, they, they call it the fruition of the bodhicitta, the Buddhahood. So, primary cause of bodhicitta, the Buddha nature. Appreciation being has as like in the jewel on ornament of liberation in the first chapter mentioned. Everybody is endowed bodhicitta. I mean, this Buddha nature, just bodhicitta. Uh, 
Add to many causes and conditions will follow. Part. So, those following into the path of the Bodhicitta called Bodhisattva, the great practitioners, are they accomplished? Part, part of accumulation, the part of preparation or application, the part of special insight and the part of meditation is all part of bodhicitta. No more learning or the perfection of the path is the Buddhahood. It has the bodhicitta. It has a, it, it contains such a profound meaning there. So now without this instruction, this part of bodhicitta, even, in one, even if one practices highest yoga tantra, one will not attain Buddhahood. See? If we follow the wrong path, not get the right result. Like the nuclear, the, nucle the nuclear, if you make it medicine, it's a very powerful medicine. If you make it a weapon, it's a very powerful weapon, very destructive. So it depends how you make it. So if we, as, uh, even though we have Buddha nature, but if you follow the wrong path, since it's interdependent, interconnected, then, see, so since that is the uh, case, without bodhicitta, even you say, highest yoga tantra practice, highest view Mahamudra, the yoga practice not allow to achieve the Buddha because there's no there's no cause. The cause is not there. So we have to have the seed to grow the crops, the tree, with the right seed. Therefore, sometimes we are so much excited. Somebody is giving some instruction to achieve enlightenment within a week. So high, profound teaching somewhere there. So, such a great teacher, you know. Such a famous, great teacher who is now going to give um, possible this achieve Buddhahood in a week. So excited after receive the teaching again. We are saying thing not changed, <laughs> and then you hear another one. There's another great teacher is coming there, has a program one weekend or one week program. So profound teaching is giving there. You must go there. So, you know, this teacher, I haven't heard of this. Can you tell me, oh, this is such, 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 such a great teacher, giving you such profound teachings. Oh, Cass, you are so excited to go there. After the program, nothing has changed. <laughs> See, it's the history. <laughs> it's nothing new, you know. <laughs> so we have to pay attention to the cause. As yesterday mentioned, the, when Buddha handled the mother, you know, Buddha gave the teachings what she can deserve, what she can digest, what she could understand, make sense for. Buddha didn't say, 
everything is empty. <laughs> you, know? you are empty. Your child is empty. There's nothing to die. You know? <laughs> that doesn't solve the problem. You know? <laughs> Poor heart is desperate. I need help. You no, know, I, 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 I don't think I can. I can see my child is empty. You know, he, he was real. You know, <laughs> so like these things, I had to, you know, have that kind of a constructive way how to follow the path. So the importance of the uh, method path. Instruction, follow. We can receive this again and again, again and again, many times, and the times. That's what Buddha said to the monks, you know, his followers. The monk today who became new monk, he or she should st study that who have studied for hundred years. Those who are old monks and nuns. They also should study the teachings of today's monks, study, practice. It's nothing new, just fresh, re energize, re organize. Like the refuge prayer we said this morning, every day we repeat, isn't that the same? Not only every day. Three times a day, same prayer. Those who came here to the center in the 80s, we have been chanting the same prayer, and today we are chanting the same. You know? <laughs> see, but the meaning makes much difference, you see. First, when you chant that prayer, now today when you chant, it's a big difference. That's what makes study other, practice more, get understanding more. And say, oh, yes, it makes sense. Yes, now I understood what this is mean. No? So that's, oh, if one has this practice, bodhicitta, one will achieve Buddhahood without choice. If your stove is turned on, you're cooking some vegetables. If you don't want to cook it, it will cook by itself because it's, your stove is turned on. You know? <laughs> so cultivate bodhicitta and keep that in the mind and then just follow the path. So that's why I said the Shantideva's text, Bodhicitta Avatara mentioned. Once you cultivated bodhicitta, Benefit will rise day or night. If you don't aware, it will bring the benefit. It's like the, you put your money in the bank, then interest will come, whether you're aware or not aware. So keep the bodhicitta. Just don't think I cannot practice bodhicitta. Just mention we have Buddha nature. We just need the will, courage. Once you have the will, the courage. Since we have Buddha, Buddha, Buddha nature. The bodhicitta is just a matter of time. It will manifest. You know? Yes, uh, since all constituent elements are mental formation, you see, all this is, uh, as yesterday mentioned, the mind is very complex. At the end, you realize everything is mind. First beginning, we may not see how everything is mine. 
Does it make sense? But if you practice all of the parts, step by step, step by step, then everything is just mental, or mental reflection. It's just a reflection, reflection of the mind, reflection of the karma. All this manifesting is the, due to the karma we have created. Karma is created by the mind. So also at the end, it's all mental reflection, see. So see that nature. So since all constituent elements are mental formation, the hell realm is the result of the mental formation of hatred. Hell realm, not really just something that exists under the ground, under the earth. Look at the jewel ornament of liberation, very precisely described. First, yes, looks like a literal, you know, the first, the, the, the lowest hell realm, then the second, third, fourth, so forth, all the layers described step by step. Because we ordinary people need that kind of, you know, pointing. So this is this, this is this, we need that. Then at the end of that, all description Kambhupa described, you see. Vivasaka school is believe in the hell realm, as Yamas, Lord of Deaths, yes, they are human beings. South Andhra school says they are not human beings. School or Yoga Tantra school, not Yoga Tantra, I should say, Yoga, yeah, Yoga Tantra. Mental Chidamandra school is all of mind. As Marpa and Nareba thought, said, and the court is from the Bodhija or Dara. Said, who purposely created the hell realm, the burning ash, the ground, burning ground, fire? It is created by the negative thought. It's very clear. The hell realm is not really exist somewhere there. It's all our mental reflection, as I mentioned. So the hell realm is just usually like this. Sometimes we're so angry, upset. Even your precious glass you are throwing on the ground, break into pieces, which you paid a lot of money. It's very destructive. It's hell realm. See. At that time, your mind is so compassionate, kindness. So much space there is. There's room for everybody. You can accommodate everybody there. It's your mind. So look at the, how much peace is there. So just look at the mind. So Buddhahood is the result of the mental formation of Bodhicitta. It, again in the Bodhicca Avatara, at the first beginning of the chapter mentioned. The Buddha who practiced the Dharma teachings for countless eons, finally, and conclusion to benefit oneself and others is the Bodhicitta. It's not a Buddhist belief. It's the causality. It's the cause we are creating. We should be so fortunate in this understanding, opportunity. So, yeah. 
So the study and practice of bodhicitta is the essence, essence of all the teachings of the Buddha. See? Now there you see many people they appreciate Buddha's teaching. Uh, they really see it's real. Buddha says, peace. Always, uh, we always not we don't appreciate mental delusions. Always we aware uh, the corruptions physically, mentally, not appreciate it. Always this awareness of peace everywhere. Anybody who knows about little bit about the Buddha's teaching, the Buddha what they say, Buddha's teaching is peace. It's because of Bodhicitta. A lot of beautiful, you no, know, exotic teachings are there. Chakras, channels, all those there. It's fascinating. This, this all has to be sealed by the bodhicitta, touched by the bodhicitta. Should be practiced on the base on bodhicitta. Then it becomes a path. Peace. This always Buddha appreciated, and great followers of the Buddha recognize that, realize that, appreciate it. Milarepa who fully. Enlightened, highly accomplished in the practice of chakra, chakra and channels, still he touched the basic bodhicitta. Because bodhicitta is the foundation of all the practices. Should always aware this, appreciate this. If one has a nerve to help others, help others on the base and bodhicitta, no expectation, no expecting rewards, simply just how they can smile, how they can free from some delusions. They can breathe a peace that on this do it this way. Since we are here, you know, uh, unenlightened beings, we all have shortcomings. Limitations, but that limitation, it can be changed, it can be improved, step by step, because we have the teachings, such a beautiful teachings, just as, it, as I mentioned, jewel ornament, the liberation, that book, is written by the Gambuba, who is the master of the Bodhicitta. All the book is concentrated, written in the frame of work of Bodhicitta. So, the 
always need to uh, read that book, study that book. Uh, it's not written by deluded individuals. It's written by enlightened minds who have perfected in the practice of bodhicitta, who saw this reality nature perfectly. So this is the single most important part of Mahayana practice. We say Mahayana, the great vehicle. What means great vehicle? Bodhicitta. Tibetan called Changchup Sen. Changchup Sen Jo Rinpoche you repeat because it is prayer. Changchup Sen Jo Rinpoche Maji Banam Kikir Chus. Changchup Sen. Fully purify all the obscuration. Chup means all accomplished, accomplished all the excellent of the Buddha's quality, all quality of the Bodhicitta. Changchup, so that mind, mind of the fully purified all obscurations and accomplished all the excellent qualities. So as mentioned, that mind, the ground bodhicitta, the path bodhicitta, the fruition bodhicitta. So please, please know that. Therefore, it is very important to understand and bring the practice into our minds. Especially as I mentioned, we have very little busy life. We are so busy life. We make busy ourselves. Look at your phone, smartphone. See, either you drive, or you are in the work, or you are in the restaurant or kitchen, dining room, or you are in the phone. Even we don't have time to talk to our friend next to us. Our friend is waiting to us next to, and you are there looking at the phone, you know, <laughs> alienating your friend there. So how you can expect such a great samadhi? Under such circumstances, Meditation, actualization of the emptiness, it's, I think it's not so easy, you know. So in this kind of time, bodhicitta is always appreciated. You just need to be aware. You can reflect on bodhicitta while you're driving. You can reflect on bodhicitta while you're working. You can reflect on bodhicitta when you're walking. You can reflect positive when you're talking. Always remind, see, just what you need is mindfulness, reflection. See, the benefit is there always. Making sense? Okay, time you see now. I have to also watch the time. I can't talk too much. <laughs> now when I'm talking here, if somebody has any questions, please now raise your hand. In the text here, what is said here, there's a preparation, actual ceremony, conclusions, the three, see. First, the preparation in order for a practitioner who is the Mayan family to cultivate bodhicitta, these four contributory courses are necessary. First, 
See, first say, seeing the Lama from whom you are taking the Bodhisattva's vow as the Buddha. So that here, Buddha, we have a statue here. So that statue is not just, as mentioned, not just a statue. It's just a uh, kind of reminding us, but you have to see, you have the Buddha here. Actual Buddha, a life Buddha. Because since we have Buddha nature, Buddha is always with us. Buddha cannot go anywhere, you see. What do you think when Buddha enlightened to Parinirvana, where is the Buddha now? What do you think? Buddha is resting in the Parinirvana? <laughs> then Buddha has perfected Bodhicitta. How he can rest in the Parinirvana? He's always with us. You know, you have heard of this, you see. Non-abiding state. Neither samsara nor nirvana. Means, Buddha is not resting in nirvana, but Buddha is also not diluted in the samsara. Good samsaric sentient beings. But like a lotus, this example, there's a, always there's a lotus flower. You see Buddha sitting on the lotus, you see. That's a, a significant, has a great significant. Lotus grow from the mud and water. Isn't it? Lotus doesn't grow from the desert. Have you seen any lotus grow from the desert? Dry place? So this mud and water symbolizes the samsara. But grow from within that and the flowers blossom so pristine, clear, beautiful, untouched by the mud. So Buddha is within in the samsara, yet not touched by the samsaric delusion. So sitting there, so Buddha is not resting somewhere in Nirvana. In some, uh, no, in Hinayana, uh, the Theravada system, they had that kind of, say, once you achieve the Nirvana, then it's, you are finished. Just for the time being, it's explained for them because they are so tired of the samsara. So Buddha who attained Buddhahood will never tired of the samsara. Always for the benefit of sentient beings they are. So that's uh, just, I'm just making, I say no, I show you at that kind of understanding the Buddha is in front of you, above in the space, not just the, the what you are, what you are what you are picturing is just for our own in our duality mind we need that. But the nature of wisdom, compassion, inseparable of appearance and emptiness, like a rainbow. You can see the rainbow, very precise color. Very clear, the colors are so clear. But you can see it, but you cannot touch it. So like that, you see the Buddha rainbow. Embodiment of wisdom, compassion. So that's what he's saying here. There's a Lama 
So Buddha is the highest Lama. You know, Sanskrit is called Guru. You know, from Guru. The translation in Tibetan Lama. So the Guru Buddha is the highest Guru. Yeah. So that's one. And um, second, gathering the vast accumulation which we had. I think we had we had the, those prayers, like you know, the seven branches of the practice. You see, uh, us we make frustration to Buddha, and then uh, make offerings whatever you have. And then that whatever exists in the universe with visualization, to infinite things you can make offering to Buddha. And then next, purification. You purify all obscurations, the mental delusions, negative karma, whatever we have created, fully purify in front of the Buddha. And rejoice, rejoice all the good deeds, rejoice you are taking Buddhist out as well. See, mm. then request not to, also request teachings, turn the wheel of Dharma teachings, and request or beseech not to take part in Nirvana, stay with us at the end of Samsara and the dedication. So these are the special method uh -huh. to accumulate great merit. This is, you say, uh, at the time of Buddha, so there was one poor man came to Buddha. And he said to Buddha, so I'm so poor. And Buddha said, maybe you practice some giving. Some generosity. And he said, I have nothing to give. I'm so poor, nothing to give. Buddha said, there's a lot you can give. And he said, wow, what? Look at the beautiful flowers out there. Beautiful forests out there. Wonderful Stream of the water, pure water there. You make this, bring in your mind, give this to all Buddhas, Buddhas out was. No? And Buddha said, you can give your smile to others. That costs nothing. So Buddha talked to him how to practice generosity. So then he realized he has a lot of things to give. He doesn't have to feel that I have nothing. So there's a skill for this teaching. So there's just a practice now. Third, the practice of four immeasurable thoughts. Love, as we said, the prayer, loving kindness, compassion, and giving joy giving the practice of the economy. See, it's not just saying prayers. Just meditate in your heart. Just meditate. May everyone have some peace. peace. You know, bring that thought in your heart. Especially if someone is irritating you. And that person has all the happiness. See how much is their benefit. It's very simple. It's not exotic. Just say no. When the mother sees her child, how much she feels? 
She wished all happiness this child should have. So like that, every session beings we bring in our heart. So just wish everyone It's not a philosophy. It's just a reality, natural. It's where how to bring peace and happiness. But that's is so compassion. May everyone free from suffering. So practice that. See. Third. And the fourth, taking the Mayana refuge. So there are two different refuge system. Care about the system, uh, the time, motivation, and the object. The object is just Buddha and general Dharma and Sankha Arhats. The object. Motivation for oneself to free from samsara, to achieve nirvana. Time until one dies, until death comes. Mayana now say the object, Buddha, the four khayas of Buddha. Dharma, all the Mayana teachings. Sangha, all the great Bodhisattvas. That's the object. Motivation. You take refuge to attempt complete Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. It's a motivation. Time, so until I attain Buddhahood. So that's the, the Mayana way of taking refuge. So please understand this. Make sure you understood this. And we go through the steps, okay? Mm. So recite the following practices of loving kindness, compassion, and joy, effortless. And now here we have the root test. Can you put it together for me? Don't have to say that. Fussy. Oh, so this oh, just. Now please open page 10. Ten. This is first how to visualize Buddha in front of you. In the space in front of myself or yourself is a lion throne. Lion symbolizes fearlessness. When you are Bodhicitta, there is no fear. So lion is a, is a lion throne on which are a lotus as a nation. And then sun. Sun here symbolizes the, the effulgence, nature of the Buddha's wisdom, the clarity mind, and the moon compassion, the wisdom and compassion. On this precious, on this precious seat, my root lama, in the form of Shakyamuni Buddha. See, the Buddha Shakyamuni is your root teacher. Uh, in the other Bodhicitta texts mentioned, if you see the Buddha as an ordinary person, then you will not achieve Bodhisattva's vow, or you cannot cultivate Bodhicitta. If you see a Bodhisattva, still says not enough. So, if you see, perceive the Buddha, as your root teacher, and your root teacher is the Buddha, Chakyamuni, then definitely you can cultivate Bodhicitta. So that Buddha is water in color. All the perfect signs of the Buddha, the 80, 32 major marks and 82 minor, 80 minor marks, 112 attributes. He is sitting in the virtual position, as I mentioned, it's called non-abiding 
position sitting, neither in Samsara nor in Nirvana. Wearing the three Dharma robes it symbolizes the three trainings, the training of the uh, morality, the training of the meditative concentration, the training of the special insight, wisdom, awareness. His body is radiating the light of uh, the light of wisdom and compassion. Means Buddha is nature of the wisdom and compassion. This is very important. Perfection of the Bodhicitta. His right hand is touching the ground, which symbolizes the benefiting sentient beings, and the left hand is in the meditative posi position. His mind is always in the meditative state, not scattered like us. He is surrounded by the lineage lamas, means lineage guru from Buddha until now, all the great masters, and Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Yidam deities, Dakinis, and Dharma guidance. From there, three special places, forehead, throat, heart. Light radius, the white light from the forehead, red light from the throat, blue light from the heart, radiate on all, in all directions, inviting all the wisdom beings, all the Buddhas, Buddhas are those, the ten directions to invite. Who inseparably, Separately dissolve into the visualized being that what you have visualized. It's called that what we, what you have visualized called samaya beings. And uh, inviting all the wisdom beings called uh, samaya uh, wisdom beings. Tamjisemba, Yishisemba. There are the embodiment of love, loving kindness, compassion, and bodhicitta, all excellent qualities. So here, the, here we have uh, offerings here. When you usually, when you uh, practice, uh, when you do practice, you can do this practice. Om Sarvatatagata, Sarvatatagata, all the Tatagata, Buddha, Saparewara, Buddha retinues. Uh, this or detail explained in the diamond glossary in the book. Okay. Now here, please uh, visualize Buddha in front of you, above in the space, or those who are sitting, the Buddha is here, or those you are facing here, you visualize Buddha. <coughs> Sorry. Each and every, you all have Buddha in your front of you, okay? <laughs> There's no limitation. In, uh, you see, in uh, one, yeah, here, we have the, we have the prayer here. You know? uh, if I read this, we see. Uh, here, please open this page seven. We will say this prayer. And before we chant, I will just a point here. Look at the third paragraph, you see? In each atom, do you see that? I visualize as many Buddhas as there are atoms, you see? In each smallest dust particle contains the countless Buddhas. Can you imagine that? See, it's inconceivable. It's we, our unenlightened mind cannot measure that. What this shows, you know, what this shows is everything is just a manifestation. Nothing is permanent. Like Miller Rebbe, who did in the Yak Horn, he entered into the Yak Horn. The Yak Horn was not bigger and he was not smaller. He perfectly just, you could sit there. Those who realize this, so 
So this is what uh, the Buddha taught us. That is the reality nature. Just in our, in our small eye. Can you see huge mountain? <laughs> you see. How your huge, all the huge mountain, can, how they can fit in your eyes. See? <laughs> in, the, in your small mirror, you huh, can see your big face. <laughs> this, we don't realize that always there's an you know, example, reflections, they're always there. But we are so fixated. Grasping, that's what's called grasping, fixated. So let this fixation go. Practice this. Allow. See. So now please uh, visualize Buddha as mentioned in front of you, as we have discussed, as I mentioned, a little bit described that. Buddha in front in front of that Buddha who are saying this all prayers please chant from the beginning. I bow down respectfully with my body, speech and mind properly to all that the goddess in the ten directions, to those who have alleviated the state, those who are resting at the present, and those that the goddess still to come. Throughout the power of Samantha Bhattara's prayers, may all Buddhas manifest vividly in my mind. I foster to them, multiply my body as many times as there are atoms of the earth. In each atom, I visualize as many Buddhas as there are atoms, surrounded by countless Buddhasattvas. Thus, all space is filled with the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. I praise all the Buddhas through the magnificent chanting, expressing the great ocean of their excellent qualities. To all the Buddhas, I make offerings of various pure flowers, flower garlands, music, anointing oils, magnificent height and fragrant incense. I make offering to them of them, women, perfumes and potpourri, pile high as Mount Meru and arranged in the most beautiful way. I visualize the highest and most extensive flowers, offer them with great faith to all the Buddhas. I prostrate to the Buddhas and make offering to them, following the deeds of the great Buddhasattva Samantha Bhattara. I confess to you, Buddhas, whatever negative actions I have done due to power of anger, desire, and ignorance, I rejoice in the merit of all the Buddhas in the ten directions of the great Buddhasattvas and Patrika Buddha, and those who have met in worship, those who have entered the path through Arachip, all those others. I request all the great protectors and Buddhas to turn the highest wheel of Dharma and light that dispel the darkness of the beings in the ten directions and lead them gradually to the enlightened state. I request these Buddhas intended to pass nirvana to live alone for many aeons as they are atoms of the earth in order to benefit all beings. Whatever merit I have gathered through frustration, offerings, confession, rejoicing, beseeching, and praying for the sake of enlightened beings, beings all this I dedicate. Thank you. Uh, this is called Accumulating the great merit. Now in front of the Buddha, now first, please meditate your mind as it is, as I mentioned, the past is just past here. The future is not yet here. And this moment of the mind is so difficult. This exists nowhere. It's just a reflection. It's 
so just meditate your mind and it is there's nothing to project objectify Have the mind as a space so please do meditation a few moments please Thank you. So this is called accumulating the wisdom. The, the yeah, it's called wisdom. Mm -hmm. Then next uh, here page uh, thirteen. Let's see, see, see the post up. Uh, if you see the page thirteen, the place we have that. Say this prayers together here okay, in English. Skillful, compassionate one, born into the family of Shakyas, your conquer the holes of Maras, which others could not. Your body is splendid like a mountain of gold. To you, the king of Shakyas, I prostrate. It's here. So you conquer the holes of Mara. Yes, Mara. The mental maras, the outer maras. Most dangerous is our mental maras, mental afflictions. So Buddha who fully conquer all. This means purified. Not even leftovers. No. Completely purified. That's how Buddha become. So we admire this, appreciate, and we should in inspire ourselves to attain this state. Okay. And next, see you now, uh, what we have is yeah, it's the taking refuge, man away. Page 14, you see. Until I attend the heart. No, no, not, not yet, not yet. <laughs> so, uh, I have to explain. Um, here, I have to do the ceremony, you know. Um, so, until I attend the heart of enlightenment, until I become Buddha. It says, mention the time until I become Buddha. I take refuge in all the Buddhas. So the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. And likewise, the assembly of Bodhisattvas. So these are the object of refuge. And we have to do this ceremony in Tibetan, you know. Now, when we do this ceremony, again, please visualize in front of you the Buddhas, all this. You are taking refuge. You are not taking refuge in me, you know. No. I'm like you who are confused, you know. <laughs> but I'm working hard. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, so, well, we all should take refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha. Okay. I'm just performing the ceremony. So, this is a uh, good thing, you know. Uh, so during the ceremony, uh, we'll do this in Tibetan. Uh, say, please listen, all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas of the generation. Please listen, Master. My name is as such that time you say your name. I say, until then, then we'll repeat like this in Tibetan. Chanju Ningu, Chikye Par, Sanjaya Namla. Yes, you know, in Tibetan words, Chanju Ningu, Chikye Par, 
exactly the translation read until I attain the heart of enlightenment. Sanjaya Namra Japsuchis, I take refuge in all the Buddhas. Chotans, Dharma, Changju Sambai, Solans, Dharma, and then Bodhisattvas as well, I take refuge. Solanation Japsuchis. During the ceremony of this, uh, what we should do is we should have, we should can sit better. Huh? What? Uh, see? If anybody, if you, if you are not eligible or if you cannot do, it's okay. If you can do, your right knee on the ground, left knee up, and join your hand. But if you are, uh, cannot do it, don't worry, just sit, you know. Uh, just. Uh, but if those can do, it's very good, you know, as uh, some kind of stretching your leg as well. So we'll repeat this. I will repeat this ceremony so you follow me. Uh, repeat this three times, okay? So make sure your visualizations are well established. And um, samsara is state of suffering, state of confusion. So we are strongly motivated to free from this confusion and the suffering. For this reason, uh, for the benefit of all sentient beings, we are taking refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha. So please repeat this. Uh, ceremony. Tibetan. Chochuna. Shube. Sangyatang. Changju Senpa. Tamje. Dala. Konsosu. Lobun. Dala. Konsosu. Daming. Please say your names. Dishi Jawa. Changju Nyingburu. Chigi Sanjay Namla, Jiaosu Che, Chodan Changchu, Sambaye, Solang, Dishin Jiaosu Che. Now please repeat the second. Please reinforce your motivation, taking refuge in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Chochuna, Shube, Sanjay Dham, Changchu Sambha, Tamje, Dala, Konsosu, Lobun, Dala, Konsosu, Taming, please say your names, Dishi Chawa, Changju Nyingburu, Chige Paran, Sanjay Namla, Yasu Che, Choda Changju, Sambaye, Tola Hang, Dishi Yasu Che. Our third at the end. Uh, when you say Deshin Japsu Che, that time so I fully uh, took refuge in Buddha Dharma Sangha and I received the refuge ordination. So please have that kind of motivation. So this, please uh, repeat the third recitation. Chochuna, Shube, Sangyatang, Changju Senpa, Tamje, Dala, Konsosu, Lobun, Dala, Konsosu, Taming, please say your names, Dishi Chawa, Changju Nyingburu, Chigi Paran, Sanjay Namla, Yapsu Che, Che Dang Ha, Changju Senpai, Solang, Dishi Yapsu Che. Yes, please say like so. Now please sit down. Yes. Okay, so these four, we have done these four uh, prerequisites necessary as a, to take the actual Bodhisattva's vow.
So here includes also, you see, five precepts. If you know uh, the lay people practice five precepts, not taking life, or not harming sentient beings, not stealing from others, not engaging in sexual misconduct, not uh, telling lies, especially spiritual lies, not intoxications. These are not a good, just not a just Buddhist, you know. These practices are appreciated by all people in the world. You know. Anybody who practices these five, who keep these five, people respect that individual. They trust that person. You know. <coughs> so for that reason, yes. Now next is actual cultivating bodhicitta. This here, say page. the bottom line, as you know. Uh, first, I will say a few explanations on this, you see. As the previous Buddhas embraced the enlightened minds, so we are taking example. We are not just new, you know. We are following the steps of the Buddha. So we are saying the Buddhas of the past who have cultivated bodhicitta, they have cultivated bodhicitta of the aspiration bodhicitta, action bodhicitta, see. Then that way they progress on the Buddhist of the path, see, step by step, they, they follow the path. By practicing the six parameters, three trainings, and they successfully practice that bodhicitta and attain the Buddha. Benefited countless sentient beings. So what a wonderful they did that. Now, today, here, I got this opportunity. I'm so fortunate. It's like myself. All sentient beings in the samsara suffering so much. I want to help but I have no ability. So, what we should do? The only thing is that we cultivate bodhicitta and then practice this in Buddhahood and then benefit countless sentient beings. So therefore I said, I too, for the benefit of all sentient beings, go through bodhicitta, cultivate bodhicitta, and apply myself to accomplish the stages of the path. The five paths, ten bhumis, practicing this six parameters step by step. See? So that's, see, cultivating bodhicitta. So here is both first aspiration bodhicitta and the action bodhicitta. So again, please refresh your visualization. Buddha, very vivid embodiment of the profession of the bodhicitta. Splendid, glorious light. All nature of the perfect qualities, wisdom and compassion. So in front of that, and other lineage masters, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, surrounded. So in front of this, today, I attack the Bodhisattvas. Ah, or I cultivate the Bodhicitta. So with this mind, sitting posture as before, uh, please uh, sit away. Oh, you are same as before. Right knee, <laughs> right knee, uh, so, uh, yeah. Now on the ground, left knee up with this, then please, uh, so, same as to all the Buddhas, Buddhas out towards the ten direction, please hear my request. Master, please uh, hear my request. My name says such, then say, rest. Say, 
uh, as the previous Buddha's uh, also Buddhist ceremony in Tibetan. Chojuna, Chube, Sangyatan, Changju Semba, Tamje, Dala, Konsosu, Lobyun Dala, Konsosu, Taming, please say your names. Dishi Chawa, Chitrangunji, Dishiji, Changju Tuni, Kieba Tang. So this here is a mission. Uh, as the Buddhas of the previous have cultivated the aspiration for the Jitta. And next, Changju Senbe, Labala, Yada Rimjin, Nebatar. As well, they have uh, maintained the practice, means the action for the Jitta. Maintain the practice of the Bodhicitta step by step on the path and until they attain Buddhahood. So, as they did, so as they followed that path, today he has an I too. So, we swear. Dishin, Dola Pendundo, Changju Semne, Gigishin, Dishin Duni, Labala. Rimbashindo, Labaraji. Pass. Now we'll repeat second time. Chojuna, Shube, Sangyadang, Changju Semba, Tamje, Dala, Konsosu, Lubyun Dala, Konsosu, Daming. Please say your name. Dishi Chawa, Chitrangunji. Dishiki, Changju Tuni, Kibatang, Changju Sempe, Labala, Yatarim She, Nebatar, Dishin Tola, Tundundo, Changju Semne, Kijishin, Dishin Tuni, Labala, Rimbashindo, Labra Ki. Third. So at the end, Rinpoche to labor keys that time to firmly meditate that I, I have cultivated the Bodhicitta. Because of this, I received the Bodhisattva's vow, Buddha Dharma Sangha. So with this uh, reinforcement and meditation, please follow the third recitation. Chojuna. Shube, Sanjedan, Changju Semba, Tamje, Dala, Konsosu, Lubyun Dala, Konsosu, Taming, please say your name, Dishi Chawa, Chitrangunji, Dishiki, Changju Tuni, Kiebatam, Changju Sembe, Labala, Yadarimshin, Nebatar, Dishin Dola, Pendunto, Changju Semne, Gigishin, Dishin Duni, Labala, Rimbashindo, Labra Ki. Now please sit down, uh, make yourself very comfortable. And I will say top, you know, that time, of course, you will say like so, that so during this time, the visualization you have in front of you, above in the space, all the surrounding Buddhas, Buddhas, Adwas, lineage masters, if you have, dissolve into Buddha, Shakyamuni in the center. And that Buddha, Shakyamuni is now in its car department of all. Bodhicitta, of the Buddhas of the ten directions, and the past, present, future. On that Buddha, now in front of you, above in the space, built into light, 
that light dissolve in you on the crown of your head. Permeate your entire body, speech, and mind. All our mental obscurations are fully purified. And we dissolve into emptiness like a space free from all. nothing to grasp said it all nothing but space to the meditation oh ta vieno Thank you. So this is uh, a uh, actual ceremony that we have done. <coughs> yeah, in page 16, what it said was this also dissolution. If you, when you practice this also, you can do this, yes, no? All the surround dissolves into the central Buddha who melts into light, dissolves into myself, and uh, through is myself, through the head and for me, it's my body and being. Blessing what chitta sustained meditation in the non conceptual state. So this is uh, today we have the uh, Bodhicitta's or Bodhisattva ceremony. Aspiration Bodhicitta, action Bodhicitta, and uh, ultimate Bodhicitta. So you at least understand that, you know. It all these three ceremony just short, abbreviated one. First, so I cultivate Bodhicitta to attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. Inspiration Bodhicitta. And second, after being cultivated, aspiration Bodhicitta practice. Follow the path. So through six parameters, three training. So after cultivated that mind, both aspiration and action, then all the visualization dissolves into me. Mind is nothing but Buddha's mind. Through these three method, get complete not way out of the root of delusion. 
all the gross mental afflictions can comprehend relative of jitters. All the subtle obscurations can comprehend at the ultimate of jitter. Please understand this. Now for the conclusion, we have three, yeah, say it's, it's called Rejoicing for Myself here. With this, anybody has this here, diamond rosary? Who has? Shame. Maybe it's just a, a better translation here. Uh, translation here. Generating joy about oneself. Yeah. Now my life has borne fruit. Human existence is well obtained. Today I am born in the Buddha's family. Now I have become Buddha's Means I have the precious human life. Does this precious human life become me? Because this having this precious human life, I could cultivate both chitta. Since I cultivated both chitta, now I become Buddhasattva, basically. So be delighted in yourself. Appreciate yourself. Rejoice yourself. Now, if you read more confirmation about this uh, in the Bodhicca Avatara, third section, second, third section there, describe where the samsara like a blind spot. You don't know. Cultivating both chitta is like a blind person finding a jewel in the trash. It's like that. So watch what a precious this is. Because all Buddhas, they become Buddha through this power. All the enlightened beings, they're free from samsara. Because of this bodhicitta, through this practice, so we appreciate, so we rejoice. So please repeat this in Tibetan once. Dindu Tate Debuye Mi Sipa Lebaratop. Rin Sanje, Rishuke, Sanje Seso, Ajurto. Now the second one they said, um, promise, yeah, promising not to dishonor the Mayana family. They said, uh, not dishonoring Mayana family, basically the same. But they said, he said, now, no matter what happens, I will act according to my inner family. And I will behave in such a way that this stainless family will not be polluted, not be dishonored. It's cause, because the Mayana family is such a precious 
we ordinary person become bodhisattva because the bodhicitta. We deluded person can achieve Buddhahood undiluted. So bodhicitta. So bodhicitta is such precious, pure. So this being such pure, unpolluted, so from today, this one. This practices there in the jewel on and the liberation, others there as well. So, uh, all root downfall of the disciples. Praising oneself, abusing other bodhisattvas. Not helping the destitute, destitute of spiritual materially. And your friends, relatives, those you know, who don't know, anyone who made the mistake, and if they apologize, not accepting their apology out of anger, out of Resentment. Then, of course, derailing from the minor path. And then, even oneself is not interested in the minor path, still, if one talks about the minor, it's also a false teaching. Teaching is right, but you have a false motivation that makes the mind teaching false teaching. So the thoughts, the mind, always respect, appreciate. No doubt they will come short, they will come getting emotions. The six parameters. So, okay. So please repeat. Uh, say them, please repeat this once. Dhani dhagi, chine kyang, rida thumbe, le samde, tumme thumbe, rigdela, nyobar minjuru, etera cha. Now third, what we have here is. Uh, mm, let See, uh, so causing others to uh, generate joy here, uh, making others rejoice. That one, so that uh, translation here from jo from the Bodhya Avatara, <coughs> the uh, Sado's way of life. So today, in front of all the protectors, means all the Buddhas, the Bodhisattvas, in front of all those, I promise to establish sentient beings in the Sugata state. Sugata means the welcome one, welcome one, means Buddha, beautifully gone, perfectly gone, non-returning gone. Attend Buddha Hood. So I have made a promise in front of the Buddha's Buddha Sattvas to establish all sentient beings in the Buddha Hood. Then next in the meantime I invited I invite them as my guests to make them happy. So at the meantime is before I become Buddha, I have to practice six parameters. 
So I invite all Saint Julian as my special guest. Guest of my practice of generosity, moral ethics, patience, perseverance, and meditative concentration. And it's a pranja and wisdom efforts. So we are regarded to this in terms of these sentient beings. As when we cultivate Buddha in front of Buddha, Buddha taught all those teachings. Buddha is very important. Our sentient beings also equally important as the Buddha to practice Bodhicitta. Because without Bodhicitta, we cannot practice loving kindness, compassion. Without Bodhicitta, we cannot cultivate Bodhicitta. Our sentient beings and Buddhas are important, equally precious. Now imagine if you make one person happy, your friend, or whom you don't know. When that person need a help, and you helped that person, how much that person will appreciate. And say thank you so much. Here. All sentient beings. She has said, you see, gods, demigods, and the rest enjoy. Be happy. I'm here for you. See, what the Bible has taught, you see. We need this thought nowadays. More than ever before. Such a precious our self, practitioner, source of peace, source of courage, wisdom, and we practice this step by step. First, we have to cherish ourselves more. When I say cherish, means cherish our practice. Because we are not fully enlightened. We are not fully established ourselves. So we have to make ourselves as an emphasis, put emphasis on this practice. Every day, as I mentioned, May all such beings have happiness. May they free from suffering. May they achieve complete enlightenment. May I establish them into the enlightenment. Say this prayers and then practice. So it's such a precious thought. This makes the mind a universal mind, opens our heart to all sentient beings. See? Thank you. See, somebody asked me, how do you know there's a rebirth? <laughs> I said, back to sports, Jita. <laughs> So this is the our completion, the ceremony, the 
Tekken Kutu Soto's Bao or cultivating Chichita. So, very grateful all came and say, appreciate Joyce. Please respect us this as much as you can. Everyday life is no inside effort. nothing but always benefit. I usually say this, just like today, you are marrying both Chita on divorce today, Chita. This is the, your best companion, friend. A friend that is the such a friend would be there when we need it the most. Life after Always give you comfort. In the refuge, there's a mentioned if one wants to achieve fearless in a state, one should take refuge. That's what Bodhicitta is about. If you practice Bodhicitta step by step, by on that, definitely one will achieve the fearlessness. Great Buddha said to us, even they go to the hell run, they have no fear. Instead, they have a joy to benefit sentient beings because the bodhicitta. So we rejoice, appreciate, as this guy read them, read the jewel ornament. Read the Bodhisattva Avatara. Respect the wonderful text. Since its translation is there, since it is well known, everywhere, study them. You don't have to read all at a time. Paragraph a day, and one page a day. Is there anybody who has not taken refuge before? Okay. Three. Okay. So after they finish, I'll give the Dharma name. Okay. Stay behind. Come here. As we'll say, the dedication prayer, uh, page 32, please. It's in this prayer booklet. So whatever virtue, merit, good things we have accumulated through this session, we dedicate to attend complete Buddhahood. Glorious, holy, venerable, precious, kind, root and lineage lamas, divine assemblies of Yidams and assemblies of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Yogins, Yoginis, and Dakinis dwelling in the tradition. Please hear my prayer. May the virtues collect in the three times by myself and all these beings in the samsara and nirvana, and in a root of virtue, not result in eight worldly concern, the four causes of samsara, or rebirth as a Sharavaka or Partika Buddha. May all Madra sentient beings, especially those enemies who hate me and mine, obstructors who harm, misleading maras and hordes of demons, experience happiness, be separated from suffering, 
has swiftly attained unsurpassed, perfect, complete, and precious Buddhahood. By the power of this vast root of virtue, may I benefit all beings through my body, speech, and mind. May the afflictions of desire, hatred, ignorance, and arrogance, and jealousy not arise in my mind. May the attachment to fame, reputation, wealth, and concern for this life not arise for even a moment. May my mind stream be moistened by loving kindness, compassion, and bodhicitta. And through that, may I become a spiritual master with good qualities equal to the infinite of space. May I gain the supreme attainment of Mahamudra in this very life. May the torment of suffering not arise even at the time of my death. May I not die with the negative thoughts. May I not die confused by wrong view. May I not experience an untimely death. May I die joyfully and happily in the great monastery of the man as such, in the pervading clarity of Dharmata. May I, in any case, gain the supreme attainment of the Mahamudra at the time of death in the Pato. Next page. By the virtues collected the three times by myself and all beings in Samsara and Nirvana, and by the innate root of virtue, May I, all sentient beings, quickly attain unsurpassed, perfect, complete, precious enlightenment. May the teachings of great Dikumba Ratna Shiri, whose omniscient Lord of the Dharma, Master of Inner Tibetans, continue to increase through study, practice, contemplation, and meditation until the end of samsara. Thank you. Yes, you can.